Welcome back guys, this is Legit Lee back again with another tutorial video. Today I want to show you guys, like in a previous video, how to make your own GT2 pulleys. What a GT2 pulley is, is basically a belt pulley that you can use for mostly 3D printers and CNC work mo for the most part, some robotics and things of that nature. I explained it on another video, so if you haven't already, definitely check that out on the previous video. I'll have it up in the cards up above for you guys to go check out um, but today like the last version I want to show you guys how to make your own version so uh, the last version I showed how to use and make it with a laser or basically a CNC machine that can like cut out a pulley out of wood or even like aluminum if you guys have a type of CNC machine that can do that um, by using a generator this time we're going to take a little bit of an easier approach and be able to print it out on like a 3D printer. So we're going to be making a 3D model version and we're going to make it really simple. This video shouldn't really be too long. Hope you guys can follow along easily. And if you have any questions at any time, definitely comment down below or if you have any trouble, definitely let me know so I can help you guys out here. But it should be pretty simple and basic. I don't think it'll be too complicated for you. There is going to be two things you're going to need. Um, so the first thing you're going to need is actually this program called OpenSCAD. And um, once you get there, you you know Google search OpenSCAD, and uh, once you do, just go to Downloads, this tab right here, and then you'll scroll down. Whether you have a Mac OS or a Windows, I have a Windows operating system, and it is running a 64-bit version. So what I did was just get the Axel installer, so executable installer, or you can get the Z, the zip package, which you know, if you use like 7-zip or Renoir or whatever you have that you, you like to use. Uh, once you download it, um, you just install it, it's pretty basic and simple. And uh, once you get that installed, the next thing you're going to need is going to be this right here. So this guy is on Thingiverse, um, it's a site here that you guys can download this free 3D information. Um, so we're going to be using this to manipulate the one that he already designed, which is going to be like a very fast shortcut. So uh, for, and once you do go here, I'll have the link in the description down below once this video is published. So you guys can actually look into my video description and download it or at least go there and download it yourself. Once it's downloaded, you're probably going to have to unzip it. Usually these are zip files. And um, once that happens, then you're going to go to open SCAD. So we'll get that up. Once you do, you'll see this right here showing, um, well, you have to go to new. There won't be anything recent. So if you go to new um, and you'll go to file open, you'll go to where you downloaded your, um, the pulley file information that you just downloaded from that Thingiverse page that I mentioned a second ago. Um, so wherever you downloaded it to, I just downloaded and unzipped it to my desktop so I know exactly where to go. Click on it, you click open, and this is what you'll get for a preview. So it's pretty um, easy to use for the most part. Um, it's not hard at all because if you're into coding, this is pretty much basic information that you would use for coding. So like uh, whether you do JavaScript or... Um, uh, Arduino coding or Python, whichever one you use, these are commented out just to give you the information. This is from Thingiverse, gives you the file information for the website. Anyway, once you do have it open, you'll see that this one right here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight teeth, right? And that's nice and all, but say you need something bigger. Like I've been mentioning, I'm designing and building my own custom. Uh, camera control robot basically is basically a motion controller for um, DSLRs and um, cinema cameras basically and uh, so if you guys are interested in those future videos of the design coming out here soon I'll definitely be posting them so you guys can look them up and follow along with me on it all you have to do is hit subscribe on my YouTube channel and hit that notification bell whenever a new video does become available for you um, but anyway so right now what I'm doing, I'm scrolling down this information. So this is the code that generates in this object to be viewable and printable, right? So if you just go down to line 23 here, you can see teeth equal eight. So we just counted out it was eight teeth, right? 
So what you're going to do is instead of it being eight, you just type in the number that you want. So say if you didn't know the number that you needed, right? You can go back to that first video that I mentioned before where I talk about these GT2 generators that you can use online. And uh, once you do, and you, you can use that information to find out how many teeth you need. And then you can go back to this program here, the SCAD, and then type in the number of teeth. I believe my teeth was 260 on the video. I can't really remember at the top of my head right now. We'll just, just say for this um, testing purposes that it is. So once you type in, in uh, 260, you're going to go to here, and then you'll see it says preview. Or you can hit F5 on your um, keyboard to generate the preview but if you just click on here now it generated and it's super huge why because it's basically 260 millimeters around because it has 200 teeth in it for the most part it may be a little off here and there but for the most part of the information it is 260 teeth well now you can be like okay Lee well that's great we can see that we can generate and make our own now two things there is two ways to go about this information i'm going to give you right now the first thing is you're going to be like okay that's great but obviously i need a bigger hole than this small little baby hole that's here so you can fix that by two different ways um so if you're needing a specific way to set this up you can just generate the stl right now export the stl and then bring it into like a uh, Fusion 360 Blender um, or if you use uh, Tinkercad or any of the free programs that you can use to actually boolean basically or cut out the exact dimension hole that you need. Or you can just do this. Go scroll down some more and you can see right here motor shaft equals 5.2. That's the radius or the inner diameter of that hole right here so it's generating for a basically five millimeter diameter shaft for a nema 17 stepper motor shaft because those are basic generic stepper motor um, dimensions for the shaft anyway for like 3d printers um, but if you have like a nema 23 those are around uh six point I think two or three five something like that to like eight millimeters in diameter so that would be a bigger fatter shaft um, so you would have to change this right so I need a I don't really need a shaft I need a bigger hole because I'm mounting this to a bearing so the bearing dimension I believe the diameter should have been like 140 if I'm not mistaken on the video. It doesn't matter because I could just go back, check out my dimensions and fix it. I'm just trying to give you guys a good um, representation here. So if you just click on, uh, you know, remove that 5.2, change it to 40. You can do 40.2. The reason why he adds 0.2 instead of exactly 5 is because uh, at least I'm not 100% sure because I never talked to the guy, but my theory is he makes the holes bigger because if you're printing this out on an FDM printer, there is going to be shrinkage because you're melting plastic and then the plastic, once it cools, it shrinks and binds together. So once it melts and then it shrinks from the cooling, it may not be exactly 140. So usually guys like me who are very meticulous at wanting to make sure that their measurements are completely accurate they would try to account for that shrinkage by adding like a 0.2 or a 0.5 somewhere around there to help make sure that the dimension is still good enough to fit on a motor shaft or a um, bearing or something of that sort anyway so what I'm going to do is just put the 40.2 just to be safe and then you'll have to do again is preview and there you go we have a hundred and forty millimeter hole now instead of that five and we can make it even bigger i think that uh 260 was off a lot i forget exactly what my dimensions is but if you need to make it even bigger than that i mean obviously all you have to do is just comment it out let's just make it uh 240 you know 0.2 whatever you want to do something like that hit generate again and you see it gets bigger as it goes on and on and on so if you're really trying to find out the real circumference of all this, you can actually just find out here. So you like if you measured out, well, my out inner diameter 
or is needs to be like 340 and my outer diameter is like 360 uh, so we can type in 340.2 if you want to do that and uh, click generate now you see it's bigger and if you see that your teeth is too much you can dial the teeth back so let's do 200 see where that gets us and uh, we don't change that we leave the teeth there's no points in this one because um, then you probably throw off the amount of teeth and this profile information I believe is the profile for how thick this is if I'm not mistaken I have to double check or it could even be well it can't be the pitch because usually a pitch would be five millimeters because it's uh, I mean yeah GT2 should be a two millimeter pitch so that would be a little different but either way um, if I do 200 it's okay that went away pretty quick not doing it so let's do undo see if that gets us back yeah so maybe it's because 260 was too small um, 200 was too small because I have the outer shaft was way too big so let's just dial it back by 10 um, teeth generate see it goes smaller that makes sense uh, let's do 220 maybe there we go now you see how thin it got and it looks pretty good it's not too bad um, you guys can obviously see that it, it just does work pretty nicely without a whole bunch of flaws or issues and um, it's pretty quick to make and if you just adjust the teeth in your shaft radius then you're pretty much be good to go I wouldn't be worried about this portion because once you because when it what this is is basically the whole diameter of when it was going to mount to the shaft of that five millimeter shaft. So none of this is really that relevant anymore because once you make a hole that big, you're not going to have that little spacing that allows you to put a little screw in a, in a nut or a, or a bolt on a nut to mount to the shaft to keep it on there. Um, at this point, you would just want to export this out and then put it into whatever other 3D program design that you normally use. And then you would, you know, mount your hole information or if, say if you want to put like some screws to help mount this as like a bracket to another piece, um, then you can go. So say, for instance, we change this to 230 instead and now it gives us a fatter information. Then when we bring it into like Blender or Fusion 360 or something, you can add like little five millimeter holes if you're using an M5 screw or a four millimeter hole and then make sure that mounts to the plate of whatever you're trying to mount it to and then you have a completely made um, GT2 pulley um, gear that you would want right here. I hope you guys liked the video. Please like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I am making, like I mentioned before, a complete camera motion control system and uh, we'll be doing a lot of programming with it and doing some little minor things. So first off, we'll probably start off with like Dragon Frame program. And, you know, I'm going to be making my own PCB with some stepper drivers and um, probably programming a, like some different Arduino boards to see which one is um, good with it, which ones don't work all that great. I want to do a lot of testing with it. So if you guys are interested in making your own or, you know, even if I make it, to where I can mass produce the boards or whatever the case may be. I may even start selling them for you guys. Um, definitely check out those videos. I'm going to come nearby future coming up in the next few weeks. I uh, hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe out there with this whole virus issue. I know I'm trying to. I appreciate everybody that watches. You guys have a great day. My name is Legit Lee, and I will see you in the next one.